everyone. This is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. Today's project is one DIY wine rack plan that's inexpensive and easy to build. Now, if you've been following along with me, you know I've been in my basement doing some remodeling. So I've just recently finished constructing and finishing this wall to my left, and I've created this nice hallway space that goes off to my full bath. And what I've really done in the process is create a focal point at the end of the hallway for some really magnificent wine storage. So the best thing about this is that you don't need to be a professional woodworker in order to get a beautifully constructed heavy duty wine storage system in your space. All you really need are some simple tools and some simple materials in order to create this. Anytime I start a building project, I sketch it out quickly on paper. And so I have my dimensions here. I have a quick sketch of what I'll be building so that I can get a handle on what needs to be cut and at what angle. The very top of this is going to be holding smaller bottles and this is actually going to be a purchase wine rack. I'm going to set it directly on top of this nice sturdy heavy duty unit. I'm using 2x12 lumber for this project today. This is really easy to get at your local big box store. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm taking a level and I'm transferring all of my measurements to my wall. And in this case it's 39 and 3 eighths across and so I really want this to be nice and square so I'm going to measure 39 and 3 eighths up. Up. So that way it's a perfect square on the wall. Now that I have my mark transferred to the wall, I'm taking my piece of 2x12 and I'm laying it right in the bottom of my space. Now I'm making a mark halfway between the bottom and the top of the unit. The center line that I just put in here is going to act as the center line for the next 2x12 piece of material that's going across this way. So I've measured up 3 quarters of an inch to the top and 3 quarters of an inch to the bottom so that I know exactly where that piece of wood is going to be. Now I can measure for the piece of wood that needs to go between the bottom and this middle level. So I'm using builder grade wood for this project and what that really means is that it's not free of knots, it has dings in it, it has dents in it. I don't really care about that because this piece of wood is getting painted. No one's ever going to see any of that stuff. What I'm more concerned about is making sure that there's a nice straight piece of wood. So how do I do that? Well, I could look down the entire width of the wood making sure that it's nice and straight all the way down and then I also turn it on its side so I'm looking at the narrow portion of the wood. I'm I'm going to close one eye and I'm going to look down that length and if it's straight that's the piece of wood that I'm going to purchase. I'm going to be using my miter saw to cut all the vertical pieces that I need for this project. And the way that I'm going to do this, I'm just going to measure each one of these out at 17 and 3 eighths. That's the measurement that I need for all six of these. And I'm going to cut it on one side and then I'm going to turn it over and cut it on the other side so I can get the entire width of this board through that saw. Before I secure these in place, I'm dry fitting everything to make sure it's going to fit in here properly. Now I'm marking the center of every horizontal piece and I'll also mark the center of every vertical piece. And then I could take these two lines and I can line them up and make sure that everything is nice and plumb, just like that. Now that the wood is removed, I'm using this stud finder to find all the studs behind the drywall. I want to make sure that anytime I secure a piece of wood to this wall that it's going to hit a 2x4 stud behind it. I have a 2x6 running underneath this little step. I know it's there because I was the one that put it there. And I have 2.5 inch screws that I'm using through this 1.5 inch board into the drywall and then into that 2x6 underneath it. So it's plenty long enough and all I'm doing here, I've already started them, I'm just going to finish driving them in. And with any of these, you want these to be dimpled down because we're going to be covering over these to hide all of the heads. In order to secure the side panels, I have four screws on each one of these. So one is going to hit a 2x4 here and the other one is going to hit a 2x4 in the corner. I've set the center piece in place, but before I go ahead and take care of the center, I'm going to take care of the ends. And because it's really close to the edge here, you can risk cracking the wood. So I have a drill bit on here. I'm just going to pre-drill a couple holes. Now this horizontal piece is secured at either end. I'm taking care of the middle section. So this middle section, I have the lines all lined up to one another. And what I'm doing, I'm going to drill in at an angle and put the screw in at an angle. So that way this is nice and secure too. I 
have three of the X's all done for you to see. I'm using one by 12s for this, and before I get cutting, I wanted you to see the direction I was going in. So the way that I've laid this out is I have one long piece sandwiched together with two shorter pieces. I have the long pieces running here in this direction, and then I have the long pieces turning and running in this direction. I have a couple pieces of the two by 12s left over that I've stacked here just to give me an extra hand and have this lay nice and straight along the table for the saw. So the way that I'm going to cut this, I'm going to cut the angle first. So it, this actually is a compound miter saw and you can set it at a 45 degree angle simply by moving this lever and tightening it in place. So now that that's done, I can line up the edge of my board right at the cutting level. Now that only made it halfway, so we're going to finish it off with a jigsaw. I'm grabbing a T-square. I'm going to continue this line from the cut. My jigsaw table is set to a 45 degree angle, and I did that with a little adjuster underneath the table here with an Allen wrench. It sets it to any angle you need, and I'm just going to follow the line along until I reach the end. Each X is made of three separate pieces, and I'm cutting the longest one first. The way that I got the measurement for that is I measured corner to corner along the longest length. So now that I have that measurement, and I also have my first angle cut at a 45 degree angle, I need a parallel angle to that. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to take this uh, board and I'm going to flip it over because I want to get an accurate measurement. So once I do that, I could take it on the longest end and I can make a mark where I need to be cutting it. So now that I've made that mark, I'm going to transfer this over to the other side of the board because if I try cutting it now, it's going to be on the wrong angle. So what I'm doing here, I'm taking a T-square, I'm lining it up, making a line, transferring it over to the other side like this. And then I'll make another line here on the back side. And this is the side that I'm going to cut on. So now that I have that on there, I'll make sure that I'm cutting it in the exact same direction as this 45 degree angle and it'll fit in there perfectly. Now I'll finish it off with the jigsaw. So here's that piece all cut, fits really well. I may need to tap it in with a mallet now I'm measuring the very center of this long piece and I'm making a mark here because when I measure for the shorter pieces I want to make sure that I get to the very center of that because that's where the board is going to be aligned to. So I'm starting in the upper corner and coming in to the edge of the board. So the 45 degree angle is all cut along the end. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to measure from the long side over. Now I can switch the miter saw to a straight cut and cut it nice and straight along that length. And then I'll slide it in just like this. I'll line the center of the board up to the line. I have a one and a quarter inch drywall screw that I'm going to be inserting into this wood before I put the third piece on. So all I'm doing here is just lining it up just like that, trying to catch the very center of this board. So now that the box is built and it's really sturdy, what I need to do at this point is take away from the fact that this has been built out of construction material. I really want this to look more like a piece of furniture. So the way I'm going to do that is by applying a fascia to the edge of all of this two by material. And I'm doing that today with some lattice material. Now lattice material is an eighth of an inch thick. It's one and a half inches wide. So it's going to fit directly over the top of all of this lumber and make it look nice and neat. So what I've done here at this point is I've taken the entire measurement, length measurement, and I've cut 45 degree angles, both top and bottom. I'm going to apply this to the front fascia just like this, and I'm going to do it with finished nails. Finished nails are actually a tiny little head, so you barely see them when they're pounded in place. And you can do this with a hammer and nails, or you can do it with a nail gun. So I have a nail gun. I have a little mini compressor, um, which is a brand new purchase for me. It's so fun. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to nail this in place uh, with the compressor, but I do need to put earplugs in because it's very, very loud. 
carpentry work is finished on the wine rack, I'm turning my focus upward to this odd little soffit above this area. I want this to look more purposeful. I want it to look like I intended it to be there. So the way I'm going to do that is with a nice piece of beefy crown molding, but it's not quite big enough for my purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another piece underneath it, which is just a piece of baseboard. So this is what the professionals do out in the world to make crown molding look bigger than it really is. And I have it cut to length, so it's just a straight cut on either end. I'm just going to glue this in place and it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. I'm putting them on the angled ends of the crown molding. It's going to hold in place really well against the baseboard and against the ceiling. And when I stood back to look at it, I realized my ceiling is not level, so I needed to come back and readjust it, and that's a really great reason to have glue instead of nails. Now, if there's one product on the market that's going to make you look like a professional, just like it makes me, it is painter's caulk, and that's what I have inserted into my caulk gun. You're going to need this. This product, it just it makes such a wonderful difference in any woodworking project that I've ever done. What it does is it fills in every single gap in between between ceilings, walls, other pieces of trim, and makes it look like you spent hours cutting that wood exactly perfectly to fit into that space. Now, I really prefer to smooth caulk with my finger, but they do make tools like this. A little silicone tip on here, you can drag it in any crevice and kind of smooth it out. I feel like I have more control with my fingers, so let me just show you exactly how I do it. I'm just going to lay it into this crack, and then I'll take a nice, wet, damp finger, and I'm just gonna drag it across the top. Now that all of the crevices are filled in with caulk, I'm going to go ahead and start filling in any area that has a screw head or a divot in the wood. I'm taking a two inch putty knife with some joint compound. Now you might ask why I'm not using wood putty. You know, wood putty is really hard to sand to a nice even finish when you're going over a big area. So joint compound is gonna work out really well because the bottles are really smooth. Nothing's going to come in contact with the surface it's going to divot it further. Well that took less than five minutes so I'm going to let this dry overnight and revisit it tomorrow when I can start painting. I purchased and assembled this metal wine rack. It's been installed directly above the cubes that I just built. It came in two big sections, front and back, and gets connected with these little metal connector pieces that actually allow you to attach this directly to the wall behind it. Makes it really sturdy. Now, if you don't have studs behind this unit, I recommend you use a plug like this. It's really heavy duty. Make sure you get the 100 pound rated version because you've got a lot of weight on this rack. So my tip for you is to use a level when you're installing this 100 bottle wine rack. You're making sure that everything is nice and plumb top to bottom. It's going to make sure that the wine rack lays nice and level side to side. And I'd love for you to see what this looks like before I load it up. So this metal wine rack accommodates 100 bottles. Now they're typical 750 milliliter. This is a Bordeaux bottle. They slide right in, but the great thing is that top shelf up there, you can put any size bottle on it and it'll store that just fine. The other thing I'd like to recommend is that you face all of your wine labels downward so that if it's installed way up high, you can read exactly what's there. And then as far as the cubes go, anything goes. You can put one and a half liter bottles like I have here, they slide right right in perfectly. I also have champagne bottles, I have short squatty bottles, I have tall slender bottles. Anything you have will fit inside one of these cubes. And you can notice too that each cube accommodates two entire cases of wine. So this is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. You know what? I'm a little short on my wine, so if you have some recommendations for me, I would absolutely love to hear what you're drinking at home. If you enjoyed watching this project, please like, share, Share, subscribe and follow chances are you've got a friend that can use one of these in their house too and also visit my website at reneeromeo.com where you can view my construction playlist and see other projects similar to this thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time